In this lecture, we are going to talk about probability spaces, Kolmogorov's axioms, uh, the concept of conditional probability, independence of two events, the law of total probability, and Bayes' rule. Okay, so we'll start with the concept of uh, a probability space. A probability space is a structure here, as you see, consisting of three components. The first one, S, we call the sample space, which we know from our discussion last week, uh, is the set of all possible outcomes of a random experiment. And the second component is F, the event space, which is also the set of all possible events that can be defined regarding this random experiment. And P is the probability measure. And probability measure here is essentially a function that assigns values to events, okay? For each event in the event space F, you have a numerical value assigned to it, which is its probability given by the probability measure function, okay? So we denote the probability of an event A in the event space F with, with this notation probability of event A. Okay, so this probability measure, it's not just any function. Of course, it, there are certain conditions that it has to satisfy. And these are laid out by the Russian mathematician Kolmogorov. And here we are going to talk about Kolmogorov's three axioms. The first one, any event in the event space, the probability assigned to this event must be non-negative, okay? It's greater than or equal to zero, okay? It cannot be negative. So a probability can never be negative. That's the first rule. So for instance, if you are solving a problem and at any point you come across a probability that is negative, then you must have made a mistake somewhere, okay? Second axiom, the probability you assign to the sample space must be one, always, okay? The probability of the sample space is one. The third axiom, it's a little bit more uh, involved, let's say. So let's say we have two events, A1 and A2 in the event space F, and these are disjoint. Disjoint means their intersection is empty, okay? They have no common outcomes. In this case, the probability we assign to the union of these two disjoint events, okay, something like this. Let's say we have this sample space S and we have two events. This is A1 and let's say this is A2, okay? These are disjoint. As you see, they do not overlap no intersection between them. If this is the case, the probability we assign to the union, this event here, must be equal to the probabilities of the individual events, as stated here, okay? The probability of the union is equal to the sum of the individual probabilities. Now this is for two disjoint events. And of course, uh, as the for all uh, qualifier indicates here, this is true for any such pair, any disjoint event. But we can generalize this to more than two events. Here, let's say we have K events, A1 through AK, okay? K being any positive integer. And let's say they are all pairwise disjoint. So A1 and AJ, whenever A is different than J, they are disjoint. So A1, uh, sorry, A sub I intersection with A sub J is empty. In this case, again, you have something like this, sample space S, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, etc. Okay, they do not have any overlapping outcomes. They are all disjoint. In this case, the probability of their union must be equal to the sum of individual probabilities as given here. The probability you assign to the union of, of the entire uh, collection 
should be equal to the sum of the individual probabilities.